Shamus, he was the first person that I ever sat in on a hand drumming workshop with, and he inspired me then. Um, and I've continued to do, I continue to do workshops with him afterwards. So he was an ideal choice to run to deliver um, the, the facilitators training course for us. I and everybody on the course um, really appreciated what Shamash did, the way he did it. The first people that taught me to play drums weren't black Africans. It was a white African. <laughs> he delivers his service and his service, his service as a facilitator is I can't fault it. Part of the main thing of the, the, the facilitation course was to get people to understand and identify the, the basic skills that are required for somebody to facilitate or lead a group of people. Um, so basically, they didn't have to be master drummers themselves, but they needed to know how to conduct a basic an orchestra or a group of people in how to be able to play individually and as a part of a collective group. So um, you have to listen to what other people are playing and everyone has an individual sound, everyone has a unique style of playing and everyone has a, you know, a different way of beating the drum I'd say or a different rhythm. The person who's a workshop leader or the facilitator must speak in a way that people can understand and in a manner that people can understand. The facilitator's skill is to try and identify those people. If you're facilitating, you need to listen and to observe to try and keep the group together. And that's the objective of the facilitator. I thought it was a really good introduction um, and it gave me a really good taste of what it would be like to be a facilitator. I found the course to be quite, uh, quite simple in terms of being a facilitator. Um, it's not gone too deep and it's allowed me to learn at a pace, um, an easy pace. Of course, uh, it's uh, allowed you to want to learn more. With hand drumming and facilitating um, it's you're giving people instructions but the knowledge of what they're doing comes from themselves it doesn't actually come from the person giving the instructions so um, you show somebody how to play a rhythm and they might play it a couple of times but they they will understand the rhythm in their way Whereas if, it, if I was teaching somebody to box, I'd say to them, throw a punch this way. And I could only show them, I would show them to throw it the way I threw it, and they'll throw it the way I threw it. And it may not be them. It may suit them to throw it another way. But whereas with the, with the drumming activity, the way, when you understand it, you understand it from your perspective, your way. Yeah, so... I'm encouraging people to develop their own knowledge. I'm not passing on my knowledge. Not only have I found out that I'm far more musical than I thought I was, I found out that I can actually facilitate as well. And it's, it's been a big learning curve and very enjoyable. Um, when you're a participant, you again need to listen and to pay attention so that you don't wander off from the group on your own. When you're in a drum circle, you have to work as a team, you have to work together. You know, 18 hours is all of the course, so you can't expect to know too much, but there's a surprising amount of techniques that um, we're given across, and it's a matter of learning them, so it's a matter of working with them. Yeah, the build-up listening exercise where um, you start and the, the, the group builds up into a crescendo where one person plays a rhythm and then the next person comes in and the next person comes in. So each person hears how the rhythm sounds with or without them. Um, and then they're able to distinguish the group sound from the individual sound as well. 
So yeah, that's a, that's that's a very good listening exercise, and that exercise is um, normally combined with the one where first people close their eyes, they play the rhythm with their eyes closed because naturally when their eyes are closed, they are forced to listen. Whereas um, when your eyes are open, you you see things, you get distracted, so you're not using your listening skills. Clear signals. We had to identify how to use clear signals so that we expressed it in a way for example if we were splitting the group in two and one group was playing one rhythm and another group was playing another rhythm you had to be able to be show how to identify to one group we used the, the technique of making eye contact with people when dealing with people in a group in a circle um, it's always good to make eye contact and that way you can be sure that, that your message has been imparted we used to say countdown so when I count to four, then you stop. So you imagine I have to do that to a group of people. So I have to make eye contact, say four, and then one, two, three, four, stop. And then at the same time, there's another group going on. And you'd say, keep that going, keep it up, keep it up. 